I'm Jasmine from the band No Joy, and I'll be reading Seeing Through Animal Eyes by Shruti Ravindran from Nautilus Magazine. And I chose this article because I'm constantly looking at my pets, my cats, my dog, the bugs in my yard. I'm constantly just staring at them and like taking photos. And I'm kind of always wondering what they're, what it looks like to them. <laughs> like, what are they looking at? Um, so this article really sparked my interest. Most animals, including birds and insects, possess their own way of seeing, shaped by the light receptors in their eyes. Human retinas, for example, are sensitive to three wavelengths of light, blue, green, and red, which enables us to see approximately one million different hues in our environment. By contrast, many mammals, including dogs, cats, and cows, sense only two wavelengths, but birds, fish, amphibians, and some insects and reptiles typically can sense four, including ultraviolet light. Their worlds are drenched in a kaleidoscope of color. They can often see a hundred times as many shades as humans do. A new technique can depict this, and other visual differences, on video, showing how the natural world looks to non-human species. The method is meant to capture how animals use color in unique and often fleeting behaviors. The team behind the new technique, which includes not only biologists, but multiple mathematicians, a physicist, an engineer, and a filmmaker, claims that their method can translate the colors and gradations of light perceived by hundreds of animals to a range of frequencies that the human eyes can comprehend with an accuracy of roughly 90%. That is, they can simulate the way a scene in a natural environment might look to a particular species of animal, what shifting shapes and objects might stand out most. The team uses commercially available cameras to record video in four color channels, blue, green, red, and ultraviolet and then applies open source software to translate the picture according to the mix of sensitivities a given animal may have. Previous ways of simulating animal vision required a laborious process that involved the use of a spectrometer, a bulky piece of lab equipment that could only capture stationary objects, not dynamic moving ones. You simply cannot swap out a filter while an animal is moving and then have comparable photographs at another wavelength range, says Daniel Hanley, one of the researchers. There are some caveats, of course. First, the animal view images are presented in false colors, a kind of human eye interpretation of what animals see. Given that our range of vision doesn't run to ultraviolet or polarized light, so this is just an abstraction to help us understand what they might be experiencing, Hanley says. Second, on a philosophical level, the pictures do not really capture what the animals are seeing, only what their photoreceptors are detecting. We're giving you the outputs of what we think is happening at the photoreceptor, Hanley says. But what the animal does with that information in its brain is different. The cameras they use also can't capture especially fast behaviors from an animal eye view, nor are they great for some lower light environments. They also miss certain dimensions of specific animals' vision, such as the magnetic fields detected and visualized by some birds, or visual acuity, which can vary widely among species. Nonetheless, the ability to simulate an approximation of the colors an animal would see holds a great deal of promise for the researchers. It could help scientists study many animal behaviors, such as the ways they use color or light to draw attention, ward off attention, locate food, or communicate with fellow creatures, from potential predators to possible mates. The technology could also be used for conservation purposes. For example, it could help reduce bird window strikes by studying the positioning of ultraviolet light stickers clear to us and black to birds on glass. These new videos can help scientists see things they may have otherwise missed and illuminate some dark corners of the natural world. Thanks for listening along with me. I really love this article. It shows me that like, even though our worlds may look different, we're all here on the same planet. So please be kind to all animals and insects. Their world may look different, but it's the same as ours. Um, you can check out NoJoy online everywhere, Instagram at NoJoy68JK69. Uh, all the other links, you can check out NoJoyMusic.com. Um, and thanks for having me at Nautilus Magazine.